in Sarawak are also allegedly involved in human rights abuses, logging in proposed national park. <laughs> But if we look at the sheer statistics behind the number of criminal prosecutions for financial institution fraud, you'll notice a shocking trend. A group that grew out of the Occupy Wall Street movement to support homeowners facing foreclosure. They're broke because we have a system called fractional reserve banking, which means that banks can lend money that they don't actually have. And that's the way we start things off when we start mocking the financial institutions that are running our country into the ground. This is your monetary update. I'm Darren Howard. I'm Robert Nisbet. And I'm Kendra Cooper. Yes, indeed. Girls in the treehouse today, but that's okay. We've taken our cootie shots, and we are currently inoculating your intellect against the monetary madness that is the banking system. You mean so, they're having a bit of an economic situation in Europe? You're, you're, are you <laughs> kidding? Let's run a clip. Uh, well, uh, Commissioner, um, Mr. President, uh, I rise again, I'm afraid, to make the same old hoary speech that I've been making here for several years, and that is, it is my opinion that you do not really understand the concept of banking. All the banks are broke. Uh, Bank Santander, Deutsche Bank, Royal Bank of Scotland, they're all broke. And why are they broke? It isn't an act of God. It isn't some sort of tsunami. They're broke because we have a system called fractional reserve banking, which means that banks can lend money that they don't actually have. It's a criminal scandal, and it's been going on for too long. To add to that problem, you have moral hazard, a very significant moral hazard from the political sphere. And most of the problem starts in politics and central banks, which are part of the same political system. We have counterfeiting, sometimes called quantitative easing, but counterfeiting by an, any other name. The artificial printing of money, which if any ordinary person did, they'd go to prison for a very long time. And yet governments and central banks do it all the time. Central banks repress the amount of interest that rate, rates are, so we don't have the real cost of money. And yet we blame the real retail banks for manipulating LIBOR. The sheer effrontery of this is quite astonishing. It's central banks. It's central banks that manipulate interest rates, Commissioner. And plus, underneath all this, we talk loosely, in a rather cavalier fashion, do we not, about deposit guarantees. So when banks go broke through their own incompetence and chicanery, the taxpayer picks up the tab. It's theft from the taxpayer. And until we start sending bankers, and I include central bankers and politicians, to prison for this outrage, it will continue. And you wouldn't believe the number of people who question me on that and say they don't believe banks make money up out of nowhere. Uh -huh. They do. They oh, do. Yeah. There you go. The guy is in the British Parliament. He's talking about the same banking system we have in Canada. Yeah. Okay? There is no economy. It's all made up out of nowhere. And it's an opinion. It's yeah. not fact. We believe it's real. I, I just like at the beginning how he's like, I've said this before for years. And like he's just literally thinking, why am I still saying this? And you know? we're wondering why we're still saying yeah. this. Let's, I want to run another clip here and then I want to talk about it. It's the biggest scam in history. It's fractional reserve lending. People are losing their homes and they're fighting back. Check this out. It's radio free. Monday, a group of protesters were outside the entrance to the Department of Justice protesting our government's failure to punish the Wall Street banksters responsible for the housing crisis that brought our nation to its knees. The group of protesters included former homeowners who had fallen victim to the housing crisis, as well as members of Occupy Our Homes, a group that grew out of the Occupy Wall Street movement to support homeowners facing foreclosure. While most of the protesters left Monday night, some camped out overnight and were back at it Tuesday morning. And that's when, without warning, one of the protesters was tasered by police. Joining me now for more on Tuesday's events and the motivation behind the protests is Jason Collette, regional organizer with the Alliance for Just Society, and Vera Johnson, a former homeowner and protest member who was arrested Monday in front of the Department of Justice. Jason, what you, you said that the police typically, that the, the people had locked arms and they were basically blocking the entrance to the Department of Justice. Do I have that right? Well, they weren't blocking the entrance, but they were, on, they were in front of the door. They'd stay the night. 
They were told that if they didn't leave, that there would be arrests. Yeah. Has the has the news media been following up on this at all? Has there been? Uh, there seems to be a lot of interest in the in the tasering. Um, we're, we're sort of sad that it happened because it takes away more from the story of the homeowners that were, that were there. So, you know, Carmen is, uh, you know, if her family was facing eviction. They all lived in that home. Right. There's a lot of folks that are in the same situation, and and, and that's really the the story is that the inaction by the Justice Department. I'm in our minds. Vera, what would you like to see happen if, in, in 30 seconds here? What would you like to see happen? Uh, I would like to see Eric Holder make the uh, bank, Wall Street bankers accountable. I think that the bankers should be in jail, not the homeowners. Yeah. And Jason, Vera, thank you so much for being with us tonight. Thank you. Thanks, Thomas. So there's your regular homeowner coming up with the solution we all know. Mm -hmm. Yes? Didn't yeah. Jeffrey Bloom just say the same thing in the European Parliament? I mean, you yeah. got, you know, there, yeah. here, central banks around the world are all crumbling right now. Mm -hmm. If you're not aware of LIBOR and the scandal, please get involved with that. The way they price fix the oil companies, mm -hmm. we just covered that in a special here. And, of course, your mortgage or your visa is made up out of nowhere. Yep. It's okay. a construct. It's just, a, it's just an opinion. Yeah. Okay, that we could change. Yeah. Now, this is the thing that really blows people away when you say, well, we could change the monetary system. That means that we just, instead of going to the Royal Bank, we go to a Canadian government bank. And they use the same rules as the Royal Bank, but it's not banksters profiting from all of our work. And I mean, they don't issue the public currency a credit for interest. Right. So debt-related, okay, remember all of our bonds that back up all of our taxes, blah, mm -hmm. blah, blah. That's all made up out of nowhere, too. Yeah. You mean okay. it's not natural? It just yeah. isn't... Yeah. Well, you know, you listen to these inherent? guys. Yeah, you're hitting an awesome point. The baby boomer and those guys older don't understand that money isn't natural, and we did just fine for 100,000 years without it. Yeah, well, we, we've created things with our minds and our ideologies, and we can change them. But we have freeloaders who've been de banking and governments who've been riding on our coattails in humanity yeah. by using this monetary system that we could co-op. Speaking of change, oh wait a second! Did the current <laughs> president of the United States promise change, and he was going to go after those big Wall Street banks? Yes, tell me more. Wonder how his track record is on that. Maybe if we had a clip about this, it would clear things up for us. Oh yes? wait, we do. <laughs> okay. Well, remember when President Obama promised to go hard on the banks after the financial crisis? Never again, he said, would American taxpayers bear the brunt of a financial sector crash at the hands of bankers making risky trades. It's a sentiment that was reiterated by Attorney General Eric Holder this week. But let me be very, very, very clear. Banks are not too big to jail. If we find a bank or a financial institution that has done something wrong, if we can prove it beyond a reasonable doubt, those cases will be brought. But if we look at the sheer statistics behind the number of criminal prosecutions for financial institution fraud, you'll notice a shocking trend. Data released by the U.S. Justice Department shows that over the past 20 years, the number of federal prosecutions for financial fraud has gone down significantly. There were 1,365 prosecutions during the height of the financial crisis in 2009 and only 1,251 in 2011. Now, I was joined earlier by Kevin Whelan. He's the campaign director for the Home Defenders League. And I began by asking him if financial institutions have committed fewer crimes since Eric Holder has become attorney general. Uh, not at all. Uh, the too big to jail policy uh, isn't that there's no financial crime to prosecute. Indeed, you could argue that the period since the financial collapse the last five years or so uh, has been a record banker crime spree. We don't have too much time left, but can you talk about some of the cases where we have seen prosecutions? Are the punishments harsh enough? Uh, we have not seen anybody who's really responsible for the shenanigans that brought on the mortgage crisis and brought down uh, the, the economy uh, put in jail or uh, seriously punished. Uh, it's been more sort of settlements where banks can uh, pay out of a small sliver of their profits uh, part of the money that they took. Kevin Whalen, campaign director for the Home Defenders League. Thank you so much for joining us. So if you take a look at the whole the the whole scandal down there, it's like stealing a five hundred thousand dollar car, getting mm -hmm. a five thousand dollar fine, but getting to keep the car. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Okay. Of course, they're jailing people who are protesting these problems. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Of course. Number of people incarcerated, 9,800 some odd people incarcerated. Number of Wall Street bankers incarcerated, a big zero. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, how do you feel about that? There's well, I, I mean, it's obvious who the jails are for. Uh-huh. You know? Uh. I mean, like... <laughs> It's not. It's not for people who, who ruin other people's lives. No, no. You know that would be it's morality like, and um, justice. It's for people who disrupt the economic system. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, HSBC launders billions and or trillions. Yes. Who knows how much in yes. drug money yes. and yes. terrorist money, and pays a fine. And nobody goes to jail. <laughs> you know what? If you were caught laundering money, you, the regular human being, you would be in jail faster. Okay. Oh, or yeah. counterfeiting. But these guys do it, and they say it's policy. And it's not like they were only caught one time. Uh, uh, you want to do this? <laughs> oh, this is something else they're doing. Yes, they oh, yeah, should be okay. made aware of, though. Here's something else they're <laughs> doing. <laughs> A new video campaign has been launched by Global Witness today, aimed at pressuring on global banking giant HSBC for dealing with logging companies operating in the forests of Sarawak. The mockumentary-style four-minute video stars British entertainer William Edgar Oddi, who narrates how HSBC, against its own policies, is funding companies flouting international forestry standards. A pristine, wonderful jungle have been flattened, trees have been cut down, and wildlife and lovely orangutans are simply losing their homes. The spokesperson added that some of the companies bankrolled by HSBC in Sarawak are also allegedly involved in human rights abuses, logging in proposed national parks. The matter was investigated by The Economist in November last year. Following this, HSBC told the magazine that Global Witness claims were not accurate, that 99% of its forest sector clients worldwide are compliant or near compliant with its policy. Global Witness is urging people around the world to sign a petition to HSBC Chief Executive officer Stuart Gulliver for profiteering from companies clearing the jungles of Borneo. And I really urge people to check out that uh, video that Bill Odie has done. It's hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> it makes so much fun of bankers. <laughs> <laughs> I, You know what? I love it when you're bringing us clips like this because if we didn't talk about it, about it nobody would know no, about it. That's true. We never heard about fractional reserve lending from CHBC AM50 talking about being no. in the dark, the dark. Well, when you see their <laughs> ads running on their station, what do you expect? Yeah, I know. <laughs> and uh, banks don't pay income tax. People kind of freak when I tell them that part. They don't realize that they, you know, you, they pay five percent off their price. I think the way it works, um, um, it's ridiculous. We pay sixty percent of our income, wow. but those guys finding strip, you know, oh, clear clear cut forest. Yes, yeah. against their own policies. Yes, I'm. Uh, <laughs> but aren't they there to serve us? Yes, yes, indeed, they are. And, and did the IMF out and say that global warming is a? a big concern and they want to stop financing it but that's hmm. that would that would be logical at any rate while we look for logic in the simpsons or the twilight zone or the banking industry we are going to continue to be there for you the person who's awake so never fear we are here i am darren howard i'm robert nisbet and i'm kendra cooper thank you so much for being in the studio here today robert and kendra you guys are doing awesome we're getting to a new format so we're <laughs> lengthening our time and we're going to be rocking the planet live in person so make sure you stay tuned for that and remember municipal sustainability is on it on its way we've got a major program to feed the world and and save our collective butts stay tuned we'll be back we'll be back with more from radio free canada